Hi, Mark Davis here with a uh, little video tutorial um, for an effects test I recently did called Vampire, where I take a little clip of a guy snarling in the camera. Uh, here it is. And uh, I'll play that again for you. And turn him into a vampire like so. Oh, wait, how do I? Okay. Um, with fangs, glowing eyes, a uh, nice background, pale skin, the whole nine yards. Um, and I just figured I'd jump on here and show you guys how to do it. Now, um, if you uh, are as into video copilot as I am, then you know, you'll probably think, oh, uh, Demon Face can totally do the same thing. Uh, but I was looking for a way to do this without using uh, video copilot's liquify effect. And um, I think I found uh, a simpler way of doing it, just seriously, just with solid layers and motion tracking. Um, and I will show you guys uh, how to do this. So, I'm going to make a new project. Um, yeah, I'll save my changes. Um, and import my footage. Fangs raw. Um, and this is just footage of a guy snarling at a camera. Now, it's very important in your footage to make sure that his canine teeth are showing the entire time because, you know, if his lips cover them up, it's going to be a uh, pain in post. Uh, so, but just take a clip and drop it in here if somebody's snarling at a camera. Now, I did mine on a green screen, um, so I'm going to chroma key out the background first. Uh, I don't know if you have BCC, uh, but if you have the Boris Continuum Complete, their chroma key is fantastic, just like so. The green's gone, um, but I'll just use that for my chroma key because um, there are plenty of ways of doing that and everybody's sort of got their own. Uh, and if you need to find a way to do that, uh, there are lots and lots of tutorials for, for chroma keying. And I'll just mat out the stuff that wasn't on uh, the green screen there. But um, we'll focus more on the chroma keying during this on uh, just making this guy into a vampire. So the uh, first effect we're going to put on this to make him look like a vampire is a basic thing everybody's got in uh, After Effects CS3, which is what I'm working in here. Uh, if you go into your color correction, it's hue and saturation. Now this thing is really a fantastic thing. Now uh, hue and saturation is a great effect. Uh, it's got, of course, hue, so you can play with that. But as you can probably tell, it doesn't look very, very vampiric. So I'm going to cancel that. And what I really want to play with right now is lightness and saturation. These two little dials here and here. Um, first, let me get a background in here because this could be sort of important. I'll just drop in this picture of an alley I've got. Um, uh, and whatever your background is, I mean, just, you know, find whatever background you think works. Here, here's mine. That's just a you know, little alley behind him. Adds some, adds some flavor. Um, but, so, the, the, what I use human saturation for in this is the, uh, the lightness you can use for anybody on a green screen to uh, correct your chroma keyed clip to the darkness of the background. This is sort of a darker background, so I'm going to pull my darkness, pull my, my lightness meter down a little, probably about negative 30. That should work with this background. And then what I'm going to do with the saturation is pulling the color out of the clip. So if I pull this down to, say, negative 40, you, you can probably notice if you're playing with it, you know, that the color at, you know, let's say, zero, and the color in his face at negative 40, there's a real distinction, and, you know, he becomes a lot paler, probably a lot more, a lot more frightening, and certainly a lot more vampiric. So I use the hue and saturation to give him that pale look of a vampire. Now, uh, alright, so now what I'm going to do is motion track and get a little, nice little motion track file on the uh, motion of his teeth so I can put some solids on there, effectively stick some, face, fake, uh, some fake teeth on and turn this guy into a real vampire and not just a pale dude. Alright, so I'm going to make a new solid, a uh, new solid layer. Let's just call it uh, tooth one. That's okay. And let's open up a little flyer down here um, and uh, change the opacity to about 25 so we can work with this. Now if you just look at, let's say, let's look at his right canine real quick and let's cut this mask so that it looks sort of like a vampire tooth that would be sticking off of his canine tooth. There we go, that's pretty close. 
I'm going to slide our opacity back up. And you can see, okay, he's sort of got a tooth. Now, it's not great. It sort of looks like, you know, zoom in a little. It sort of looks like just like a little cap on his tooth, but uh, we'll work on it. It's going to look a lot better in a sec. And we're just using this as a test for right now. And you can, you can play with your tooth so you know it looks good. Now what we're going to do, we're going to drop in back into Fang's Raw and go down here in this corner to our Tracker Controls panel and then click Track Motion. Now it's going to take you back to your original clip. Grab this little box here um, and uh, slide it on down and find a nice point that will stick to you. I found that on the canine, right in there, it seems to track pretty well. And then just jump down here and click the little forward button right here. And if it, okay, and that looks like it, oh, I didn't track in the beginning. All right, now because I didn't track in the beginning, it doesn't have data from back here, so I'm just going to delete that tracker and try again. Um, track motion, grab a track point. Sometimes you got to try this a couple times, but uh, just keep trying it until you've got one that works. We play here. Uh, that worked pretty well. It gives a pretty good track. Uh, so I'll, I'll try with that and then I'll retry it if it really doesn't work. So now what I'm going to do, uh, I've got a motion track file on Fangs Raw. I'm going to go into the tooth and in the tracker controls I'm going to click motion source, Fangs Raw. And uh, then I'm going to hit apply here when it takes me back to here. And now our tooth, now our tooth moves along with my face, it's just down down, down on my chin, which is sort of awkward. Um, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that tooth. Uh, in the tooth um, position, highlight all those points, and then slide effectively. Well, if with all the keyframes highlighted, I'm going to slide the tooth up and over to the left so that it matches where it should be. And I think that's. That's, that's about right. So now the tooth should follow right along with where my tooth is going. Now it's a little off. I'm going to correct it a little. Um, I have all these keyframes. And there's a lot of correction uh, you, can do, you can do on this, but I wouldn't worry too much about it now. It's more something you can do once you get, once you get everything all worked out. Um, Okay, so now I've corrected uh, the control points to where the tooth now follows uh, the, the motion of the rest of the mouth pretty well. And by the way, you can do that just by highlighting the points that seem a little off from the rest of them. And uh, when that's highlighted, if you slide the position uh, wheels right here, it'll slide those control points over a little bit. Um, and so you can correct it that way. Now what we're going to do is take this tooth and copy it. Control C, Control V, it'll make another one of these teeth. Now you got you got two teeth, but they're both the same. They're both on the same point. What you want to do is open up your second one of these tooth ones, select all your keyframes, and slide the position over to the other canine tooth. Once you got it over there, you should notice it roughly it roughly follows the motion of the other canine tooth. There's of course a little correcting you got to do over here too. What you really want to do right now is correct your mask shape so that it matches the shape of the other tooth because right now you have two right teeth, which doesn't quite work. So just correct that tooth shape. Now these, are, these are some pretty massive teeth. I guess I'm a pretty dangerous vampire. Uh, but ooh, that looks crappy. Just play with these until you think you got something that looks looks about right, and then um, move on to the next step, which will be uh, to uh, color correct these teeth. Um, what you're gonna want to do, you have of course two individual teeth now, so you're gonna have to do this one at a time. But that's better because uh, the lighting is probably gonna be different on both sides of your face. So correcting their colors uh, individually is going to give you a more realistic uh, pair of teeth. Okay, now what I'm going to do to change the color of these teeth is to click on the first one. Let's do, uh, let's do this tooth first. And I'm going to go into color correction again and find the change to color effect and just drag it onto that tooth. 
Now the from is already going to be white. If it's not, click on the little, uh, little eyedropper and click on your tooth. And the two, click the eyedropper and just click on the tooth next to it. Now it doesn't change anything right now, uh, but if you go into the change thing right here, hold the drop down and select hue, lightness, and saturation. You'll notice if you click off the tooth, the color should match the tooth next to it pretty perfectly. Um, if you go to the other tooth, do the same thing. Change to color from and to next to it. Hue, lightness, and saturation. That didn't work because I picked sort of an odd color. Oh, I think it might have worked. And now you can see already these teeth are looking a lot more realistic. Of course, I've got some mat and movement problems going on in here, but, um, but for now, uh, for now, this is pretty good. And once you've got your teeth to this point of the color and the shape looking right, or with, with, at least with the color and the motion track working, um, now I'd advise you just, you know, pause the tutorial, uh, play with the shape of your teeth, and uh, play with your motion tracking a little until you've got it looking somewhere uh, that you like. Okay, and this last part's pretty simple. Uh, all we're going to do is make a new solid layer. Uh, this one's going to be red, though, uh, unless, well, I guess pick whatever color you'd like, but, uh, crap, I just need a light layer. New, solid. And just make this a red solid on, uh, on, top, of, on top of your picture. Now, just like last time, open up the Transform menu and scroll down your opacity. This is even more important this time. And what you're going to do just take your, uh, take your pen tool up here and cut a little circle around your actor's eye. So now you should have this little red uh, semi-transparent circle over their eye. Now you're going to say, okay, that looks sort of crappy. It's this little very angular oval looking shape. Now if you grab on that though, and go down into the red solid area right in here. Um, go to masks and open up that mask one. Okay, open it. You grab your mask feather and increase the feathering a little. Start to see that you know the red sort of blends in with the eye around it, and um, it'll actually look. It should look at this point to be uh, to be pretty cool. It'll sort of add a little glowing red to the eye, which should add to the vampire effect. Now, uh, if you go into your teeth, open up that. Open up your uh, teeth's transform and all these nice little position keyframes. If you go into these and highlight all your position keyframes for the tooth, copy it, uh, minimize the tooth, open up your eye again. Now slide to the beginning. Of course, now I have a glowing dot on my head. That's, that's funny. Slide your eye at the very first frame of your clip down to uh, on where your actor's eye is, and then grab onto the solid's uh, position right here. Uh, Click the little clock to start at keyframing, and press Control V. It auto motion track the eye uh, pretty closely to where the eye actually is. Now I've got some problems in mind, so I'm going to play with it uh, for a sec. Push it down a little, and, and these ones I'm going to slide it up. But all I'm doing right now is just Correcting its motion so it better fits where the eye goes, and this is just this is just the same thing you did for the teeth, but onto the eye instead. You should notice here pretty quickly. Uh, eventually, once you play with it right, uh, you'll have this nice glowing red eye. Okay, now that I've got my keyframes corrected, I've got this nice little glowing red tint to the eye that uh, should follow my eye when the eyeball moves. Um, as to the effects. Now all we've got left to do that I did was to just copy this red solid here that's your uh, glowing eye. Just control C and control V. And uh, wow, it's brighter now because I've got two layer on top of each other. And just go into your second eye, open up the transform, highlight all your position keyframes, and then slide the position over to the other eye. Then with a little correction, uh, of course necessary, you'll have two glowing red eyes, um, a pair of nice sharp teeth, pale skin, uh, which of course you can you know correct later. All these colors you can uh, correct at any time during the process, and nothing nothing's gonna like you know, die on you. Here I'll make my skin even paler, anywhere in a negative 40 to negative 
70 of saturation should look good for a vampire. And from that, you know, from that beginning, uh, that beginning, you know, actor snarling at a camera, you end up with, uh, with this. Which I think looks a crazy bit better than the original. Uh, thanks for watching. This is an effects test and tutorial by uh, Mark Davis of Defy Reality Pictures. Um, thank you for your support. Goodbye.